Okay, this screencast is all about transformations of functions. And before we actually talk about transformations, let's look at some parent functions that we should all be familiar with. The simplest one is called the constant function, where f of x just equals a constant, and that's a horizontal line. And then we have the identity function, where f of x equals x, so that's a line of slope 1 passing through the origin. And we also have an absolute value function, where the, it's a v shape with the vertex at 0, 0. The square root function has a domain greater than or equal to 0, and it's half of a sideways parabola. So we have points at 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, uh, 2 root 2, 4, 2, etc. Then we have our squaring function, which is our familiar parabola, vertex at 0, 0, and the cubing function, domain all real numbers, always increasing, passing through the origin. Now there are two types of transformations, rigid and non-rigid. And the, uh, hang on a minute, and the rigid don't change a shape of your function. Okay? Whereas the non-rigid do change the shape of your graph. So, let's look at rigid transformations first. We've got shifts and reflections and we're going to look at shifting. So you'll notice that I have g of x equals x squared, and that's my basic parabola, vertex at 0, 0, and I'm subtracting h from x. So let's see what happens when we let h change. So notice that when h is 5, my function is x minus 5 squared, and it moves to the right 5 units. So when I'm subtracting a number from x, it's going to move to the right. Now we're coming back to h equals 0. And then as soon as h becomes negative, so now I've got x minus a negative 3, which is really x plus 3. So if I'm adding a number to x, it's going to move to the left. Okay, let's get back to 0. And now, let's add a number to the entire squared function. So if I have x squared plus 5, it takes the parabola and it just moves it up 5 units. And now if I have x squared minus 4, it moves the whole thing down 5 units. Now it may look like the shape's changing, but it's really not. It's exactly the same parabola. We're just looking at a different section of it. You can see that it lines up exactly over our original g of x equals x squared. So that's shifting. So let's summarize what we just learned here. If I have f of x plus a constant, it shifts left. If I have f of x minus a constant, it shifts to the right. If I have f of x with the constant being added to the whole function, it shifts up and f of x with a constant being subtracted from the whole function, it shifts down. So those are rigid transformations. They do not change the shape of the graph. The other type of rigid transformation is a reflection. And we're going to see what happens when we take x and make it negative. Okay, so here I'm, I've got uh, f of x equals the square root of x, and a is 1 and b is 1, so that's just the square root of x, and I'm going to make the square root function become negative now. 
So that's f of x equals square root of x, negative square root of x. Square root of x, negative square root of x. So I hope you see that the reflection is over the x-axis when we have the minus outside the function. Now let's change the sign of x inside the function. There's square root of negative x, square root of x, square root of negative x, square root of x. So let's summarize that. If we have f of negative x, it reflects on the y-axis, and negative f of x reflects on the x-axis. Okay? Now, non-rigid transformations. If I take a function f of x and I multiply the entire function by a constant a, we call that a scale change of the function in the vertical direction. So, I've got f of x equals x squared, and then let's see what happens when I multiply that x squared by a. Notice that it doesn't shift, but the shape is changing. And then when it be so a scale change, for example, right here, what's happening is that that multiplying by 4 makes all of these y values go up 4 times faster, which has the effect of making the parabola skinnier. And then as soon as it becomes negative, of course, it's going to flip over the x-axis as a reflection and go in the negative direction. Okay? So now it's going in the negative direction five times faster than it normally would. So instead of having a point at 1, 1, it's not going to have a point at 1, negative 5. Now, what happens if we multiply x by a value? So I'm going to leave a at 1, and I'm going to multiply x by different numbers. OK, I'm going to stop it right there. So this is g of x equals the sine of 2x. Normally, one period of sine goes from 0 to 2 pi. But now, if I multiply x by 2, it finishes the period in 1 pi space. So multiplying x by 2 has the effect of squeezing the graph into half the space. OK. Now I'm multiplying x by 1 half. And you'll notice that now the graph is taking twice as long to complete one period. So multiplying a fun x inside a function by 1 half stretches it out so it's twice as long horizontally as it used to be. OK, squeeze together, and then back to normal. And then remember what happens if I multiply the entire function by a constant? It's a scale change in the vertical direction. Now, if you learn these transformations, then they're really handy because they work on any kind of function. So if you know the parent function and you have some transformations on it, why, it becomes a pretty simple matter of just graphing it. For example, let's take y equals the absolute value of x. So we know that it looks like a v right there. And then if I ask you to graph y equals x minus 2 inside the absolute value plus 3, the x minus 2 is going to move it to the right two units. And the plus 3 outside is going to move the whole thing up 3. So my vertex is now going to move from 0, 0 to 2, 3. And both of these are rigid transformations, so the shape will not 
change. And so that's a quick way to graph y equals the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3.